Hello, thank you for joining the Scalable SOA with Gigaspaces and Mule webinar. Today we're joined by Ken Yegan, Senior Director of Engineering at MuleSource, and Yuri Cohen, Product Manager at Gigaspaces. Throughout the event, you will be in a listen-only mode. Guys, thanks for being here. Our pleasure. You can ask to be here. You can ask questions via the chat console to the left of the screen. Yuri and Ken will try to take questions throughout the webinar and will have dedicated time for Q&A at the end. We will be sending an archive of the webinar as well as PDF of the slides in a week. With that, I'd like to hand it over to Ken Yegan. Ken? Thanks, Steve, and hello, everyone. Over the past few months, we've been receiving quite a few questions about how to scale SOA projects and specifically how to do so using Mule and Gigaspaces. To address this feedback, we're working with Gigaspaces to bring new solutions to you. On today's webinar, we're going to be prepared to discuss who we MuleSource are, who Gigaspaces is, and what the Extreme Application Platform is, how the Mule and Giga integration actually works, and we have a real use case to share for this as well as a uh, demonstration. And then as Steve mentioned, we'll save some time to address some questions you may have uh, also at the end. So first off, I'd like to define exactly what an enterprise service bus is. The concept of an ESB has evolved due to the challenges of integration. Initially, there's been a lot of point-to-point -point integration where there was a lot of custom code that was complex and brittle, has a high level of maintenance, and is extremely difficult to scale. This was often replaced uh, with EAI uh, solutions with a hub and spoke architecture that were usually proprietary and centralized, and, and these also increased maintenance costs and limited their scalability. By contrast, the bus model provides a distributed architecture where the ESP functionality can be physically separated. It also enjoys open standards such as JMS, XML, and web services. The bus provides a set of capabilities that enable SOA, including routing, transformation, and management of messages between endpoints. An ESB should allow for multiple deployment technologies, enabling organizations to leverage their existing assets quickly to achieve ROI and incrementally scale their deployments over time. So how does Mule play into all of this? MuleSource is the company behind Mule and offers the Mule Enterprise Service Bus. Mule allows you to create and deploy modular and reusable services where your business logic is separated and shielded from the details of message formats, transport protocols, and data transformation requirements. Mule can also orchestrate the internal composition of your business services, allowing you to flexibly compose them from lower level reusable services. Other products that we also have that we will not be covering today include Mule Galaxy, a registry repository solution for SOA governance, and Mule HQ, a systems and application management tool. So why Mule Source? Bottom line, we're an open source company, and we believe in creating products that fit our customers' and users' needs. Mule itself is pragmatic, useful, simple, flexible, and scalable. So I mentioned we're an open source company, and why do we think open source is important? A few years ago, a few years back, open source would have been a gamble. Now products have matured, and open source is the choice for SOA infrastructures. Mule itself has been downloaded over a million times and deployed in over 2,000 production environments, including a number of Fortune 50 companies. In this down economy, open source is proving to be a viable solution because you can acquire sound tools and products for low total cost of ownership. So products have evolved, and so has the marketplace. So let's take a look at some of the next generation application platform requirements. These requirements are more stringent than ever. Applications must allow for transparent use of fixed virtual and cloud computing environments. And as virtual and cloud computing play bigger roles, you must enable your systems to capture and leverage the value and scale of these environments by providing application portability and visibility across them. Also, your applications must scale on demand to meet business SLAs. Agility requires predictable linear scalability with no code changes. Guaranteed high performance and fault tolerance are also very critical. So let's switch gears. Yuri, can you give us an overview of Gigaspaces? Uh, certainly. Thanks, Ken. Um, so Gigaspaces has been around for about uh, eight years now. Uh, we had our first uh, uh, product release in, in 2003. Um, we have over 100 direct customers already and uh, 2,000 deployments. 
and uh, were considered by Gartner to be uh, one of the world leaders in extreme transaction processing. Um, our clientele uh, range from uh, large financial institutions, uh, telecom companies, um, and uh, more recently other uh, other verticals such as online gaming and web to the applications that need extreme scalability. So Giga addresses several market themes including cloud transaction processing and consolidation. Can you expand on your key value propositions? Certainly. Um, so the idea behind Giga Spaces is uh, basically a new generation of, a, of an application server which uh, combines um, some of the uh, more modern uh, concepts in, in, in enterprise computing, whether it's uh, distributed cache, distributed caching, uh, extreme transaction processing, um, and virtualization of the application. And Gigaspaces is built uh, around a few key value drivers. Uh, the first one is, is what we call uh, predictable scalability. So when you want to scale your application, it's very important that you know how to do it in terms of how much money you would need to invest. Uh, up until now, if you are talking about uh, traditional centralized architecture that have database or, or a message queue um, in the middle, then when you want to scale your application from, say, 1,000 transactions to 2,000 transactions, uh, you really don't know how much more hardware you're going to have to throw at this thing and, and whether or not it's going to scale as you predict. So the first pillar is to be able to tell that if one machine can do 1,000 transactions, then two machines can do 2,000, and three machines can do 3,000, and so on and so forth. So that's one key element uh, uh, in, in the GigaSpaces uh, uh, package. Um, the other key element is obviously we started off um, from serving uh, very large financial institutions and telecom companies which view reliability and, uh, and uh, kind of uh, uh, the unbreakability of applications as a key value. So over the years, our platform uh, has evolved and matured uh, to support the most uh, stringent requirements uh, uh, on applications, whether it's extreme transaction load, um, working over a large period of time, um, being able to deal with, uh, with unexpected conditions and do all that without, uh, without losing the SLA or without uh, interrupting service to, uh, to customers. Um, the last thing maybe I would say is the ability to, is, is, is what, it, what we call um, the flexibility or the, or the ability to take the same applications and, and, and run them on one hand, in your own IDE, on one machine, one box, just for development and debugging uh, purposes, and then take the exact same application, maybe change uh, one or two configuration tweaks, certainly not, not recompile it or touch the code, and deploy it on two, five, ten, or 100 machines, wherever they are located, whether it's uh, in your own uh, um, corporate data center or uh, on, on some sort of uh, external cloud like Amazon EC2. And the application should remain the same no matter, no matter what. Great. So let's take a look at the product. Yuri, why don't you give us some of the benefits of the Gigaspaces Extreme application platform? Certainly. Um, so like I said before, Gigaspaces is, 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 if you will, a new generation of application server. Um, our core product is built around, uh, built around Java, and at the center of which you will find uh, an in-memory data grid that has both um, data access uh, capabilities, which means you can read and write objects uh, uh, from, and has messaging capabilities, which means you can subscribe to uh, things that happen within this uh, data grid. So if some type of object gets written to it that uh, conforms or that applies to certain uh, properties or certain query, then your code could be notified and do something useful about it. Um, the other bit of the product is, is the whole deployment environment. Um, so we bring a new approach to, do, to this as well. So in, in, um, besides of just developing the application logic itself, when you deploy the application, you assign uh, what we call SLAs, or service level agreements, to this application. So you can say on how many nodes you want, you want to deploy it. If you're using a data grid within the application, you can say what's the topology of this data grid going to be. And uh, say for every piece of data that's stored in the data grid, on how many more machines you want it to be backed up, and so on and so forth. So, so we refer to this as SLA. And the surrounding environment, or the biggest is the grid management uh, software, 
will ensure that uh, uh, at, any given mo at any given point in time, um, the application maintains these SLAs. So if one node fails, it will redeploy the failed services that, that were uh, deployed on that node on other uh, nodes that are available uh, that are available at the network um, uh, at that time. Um, now, one of the key values uh, we see in gigaspaces is not having uh, to force people to uh, um, to learn new uh, frameworks or, or a new programming models. So we integrate very tightly uh, with very popular open source frameworks such as Mule, such as uh, the Spring framework. Uh, for example, uh, uh, our entire transaction uh, processing model is, is based on Spring. So if you know that, basically you can do transactions with gigaspaces. We have very tight integration with uh, Hibernate for uh, persistency. And uh, most recently, we have uh, introduced a, a web container or an application server, basically, that can be deployed within our environment. So you can deploy any JE application on the Gigaspace environment and enjoy the same uh, SLA properties for the same uh, level of management that, uh, that we previously gave only for Gigaspace-specific applications. Okay. So let's get into the integration options between Mule and Gigaspaces. Um, working with each other as well as with our customers, Mule and Gigaspaces have combined the strengths of our products. The bottom line here is that we support a high-performance transaction infrastructure that can integrate any application using any protocol with maximum throughput and data loss. So Yuri is going to take us through. Why don't you take us through and highlight some of these integration points and how they're done? Certainly. Okay. So. Um, Basically, with uh, with our integration uh, with Mule, we have uh, uh, three main integration points, which I'm going to dive uh, into the details of uh, uh, shortly. The first one is what we call SATA queues on steroids, and it's the ability um, to take Mule SATA queues, which are basically the uh, the infrastructure for uh, for any Mule uh, in-memory workflow, and and put them on the data grid, so you enjoy uh, in-memory uh, in-memory performance but you don't sacrifice on reliability because the data grid can be deployed in redundant uh, topologies. The second is the scalable transport layer, or the mule connector. Um, I mentioned before that Gigaspace's data grid also has messaging capabilities. Um, so instead of sending messages through, uh, say, a, a GMS uh, server, you can now send them over Gigaspaces and enjoy the, uh, the, the extreme scalability and performance that Gigaspace provides because it doesn't use any disk I.O. It doesn't do um, any disk writes or database writes uh, during the course of a transaction. So typically, it's much faster than the, um, than the usual uh, message queue. The last bit is taking this, the, your existing mule applications and, again, deploying them into the Gigaspace environment. Uh, much the same way that we do with, uh, with, say, web applications. So you can take the Mule application and assign SLA attributes to it, such as number of instances to maintain, um, whether or not you want to start new instances when the load increases, so on and so forth. This, this, these are all capabilities that are uh, given to you by the Gigaspace environment. And you can now take Mule applications and, um, and basically use, that, use these applications on the environment. Now let me dive uh, into the details of each of these uh, uh, integration points. So we'll start off by, by uh, Mule SATA queues. Now the first thing I, I uh, when, I, when, I, when I read about Mule and when I, when I learned the technology, the first thing I liked about it is that you can uh, really decouple services from the runtime deployment. So you can take the same application, same services, and deploy them, say, uh, uh, one time you can deploy them uh, as in-process workflow. So the services can communicate with one another using in-memory uh, in memory queues. And you can take the same application and then deploy it uh, using, uh, say, JMS queues. So in the first case, obviously, you would get very high performance because everything is done in memory. And on the second case, you get the robustness and, and transactional support of the JMS queue. And the nice thing about Mule is that you can choose these without uh, having to change your application. Now, this immediately struck us with Gigaspace as, uh, as a very appealing integration point because, like I said, if you're using in-memory queues, um, sure, you have very, very good performance, but then what happens if everything fails? So basically, it means that either the message has to, re -pump, to, be, to be pumped again into the system uh, and you lose all the interim state or, all the, uh, or, or, or the state in which the application was during the, fa the, the failure time. 
Now, on the other hand, if you're using JMS, uh, you lose your second fraction scalability because typically messaging uh, servers, when they want to do high availability or when they do want to do reliability, they would write things to disk. So this would be uh, very reliable, but then it would be very slow comparing to in-memory solutions. So the solution here is to take the space or the gigaspaces in-memory data grid and base the state queues on, 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 on the space. And every message that gets passed between new services, now instead of being passed through uh, in-memory queues, it's being passed through the in-memory data grid. And, the in and when you deploy the in-memory data grid, you can decide whether it's just in process or whether it's replicated uh, to one or more backup instances. And if you do that, basically when something fails or something wrong happens to your application, everything is automatically um, routed to the to the to, to one of the backup uh, one of the one of the backup copies of the data grid, and which obviously becomes primary, and everything continues to work from the same point because the memory grid, the, in, the data grid is uh, transactional. So to sum up this this type of uh, of uh, integration, we basically take the messaging part or the the, the message communication between new services and base them on the data grid thus creating uh, a very fast uh, message flow because it's in memory, but on the other hand, it's also a reliable message flow because everything can be backed up uh, on at least one other node on the network. Now, the other bit of it is scalability. So Gigaspace automatically supports what we call content-based routing. And when the client sends a message to the Gigaspace's data grid, or to the new application, doesn't really know uh, which node it's going to get routed to eventually. But as a developer, you can choose how this routing will uh, will going to take place, and say on, on some based on some property of the message. So every message, every message, all the messages that have the same property will get routed basically to the same uh, to the same node in, uh, in 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 your application. This is all done, of course, transparently. You don't need to, to change a single line of code for that. So today you can deploy. Uh, your uh, uh, workflow application on one node, and tomorrow you can do it on two or three or ten nodes. And we will take care of all the uh, all the routing or all the partitioning of messages for you. So that's the first bit. Um, the second bit is the scalable transport layer, and this is very similar to uh, uh, you know instead of using uh, an external messaging provider, um, obviously asynchronous messaging providers such as a JMSQ. You can now take uh, Gigaspaces and use it, uh, and use a, a dedicated mule connector for Gigaspaces to send message over. And what you get in exchange is the ability to scale the queue into uh, any number of nodes. So you don't have to force yourself to use just one uh, server. <coughs> and everything again is done in memory, so there's no me there's no uh, uh, any there's, there's no disk kits. During the transaction, and, the, and when you send the message, basically everything uh, gets gets communicated to the application in in, a, in an in-memory fashion without hitting, ever hitting the disk. Okay, so again, to uh, to manifest that, instead of having a single message queue, which obviously has its own uh, uh, redundancy strategy, we take the message queue and we put it into the data grid. And then communicate with the application through the data grid through the data grid as the messaging bus. So the last part of the, of the integration is deploying your existing mule applications on inside the Gigaspace SLA, SLA driven environment. So what you get out of this is that now Gigaspace is kind of takes over the application management uh, facets. So <coughs> When the application is deployed onto the Gigaspace environment, again, you can state how many uh, instances of that application you want to maintain, um, what's the redundancy level that the application should, should have. So if you're using, for example, uh, in-memory data grid within the application, you can say that this in-memory data grid will have one or two or three backup copies. If one of those machines fails, the SLA-driven environment will take care of re-instantiating the instances that was that were previously running on this machine on other machines in uh, in your environment, and we'll see that in the demo today. And even better than that, if the load on the application increases, 
and load can be defined by any uh, application specific measurement such as the number of messages on a given queue or the CPU utilization on, on one of the machines. If that happens, you can tell Gigaspaces, okay, I want another application instance started on the fly. I have machines for that, my environment is ready, and I'll just start this application instance so I can process more messages concurrently. So these are the, the three main uh, integration points um, of Gigaspaces and Mule. Now, okay. um, yeah. that, that, that's great. I wanted to, um, Yuri, maybe we stop saying there was a, um, there was a couple questions specifically about some of the stuff you talked about. Um, uh, one question maybe you can be good to address right now. There was a, uh, what is the trade-off uh, between persisting to disk reliability and replication of multiple data spaces? Is there a network hit uh, to replicate? Uh, yes, Ob obviously it, it, it depends on the, on the message size that you want to replicate and number of messages that you replicate. Um, when you start uh, talking about replication between uh, uh, multiple nodes, then obviously you need more network bandwidth depending on the application requirements. But from our test, we have found that uh, typically replication over the network can take anywhere between 10 to 100 times uh, less than when, you repli when you're writing to the disk and using transactions to write to the disk. Okay. All right, great. This is all great to hear. And I think uh, the best way to understand this even more is to uh, look at the use case. So we have a shared customer. And Yuri, why don't you tell us what they're doing? Sure. Okay. So for uh, uh, we can't just yet uh, uh, publish uh, the name of this customer, but uh, this is uh, um, a very, uh, a very uh, famous financial institution. And here we're talking about a credit risk analysis application that was implemented um, um, over Mule and Gigaspaces. The history of, of, of this project is that this application was first implemented on top, on top of Mule, and then to add the uh, the scalability and high availability parts to it. Um, the, this company used Gigaspaces. The, um, the workflow of the, of the application is, is, is a very simple one. Uh, there is an external data feed, uh, in this case, for example, from, uh, from Bloomberg. Bloomberg provides uh, raw uh, information about uh, certain uh, uh, risk attributes of portfolios um, and other securities. And these messages would get pumped into the system and then uh, pass uh, a workflow of five steps, basically each step uh, taking the, uh, using the output of the step that preceded it. And at the end of this workflow, uh, we have a process uh, message that, uh, that actually uh, contains the risk, the, the, the relevant risk for, uh, for, that, for that security um, that was calculated by the system. Now moving forward, um, talking about a little bit about the, the, the physical architecture. So um, <coughs> the data grid was used, Gigaspace data grid was used here as the messaging uh, uh, layer, as the message bus for transferring those messages between the services. And each service, of course, was, was a new service bin consuming and sending messages uh, to this data grid. We also used uh, um, Gigaspace's uh, connector for Mule um, to receive messages, inbound messages, and to send them out to external customers that are uh, using the output for that system. Now, the next slide here sh actually actually shows um, uh, the flexibility of, of, of using uh, Gigaspaces and Mule together. So, initially, the, the, the customers started implementing all of the services um, um, kind of in a, in a co-located fashion. So everything, all of the workflow that I just mentioned uh, would take place within the memory of a single node. Now, um, after a while, uh, once uh, some of the tests were completed, uh, the customer decided that he wanted to scale some of the services, in this case, uh, what we call EDS calculation. It's a very comp complex cal <coughs> calculation that takes a lot of CPU. So the customer decided that they want to scale this service separately. So what we did is, to take these services outside, basically made, make them uh, non-co-located services or remote services, and then because latency didn't matter that much uh, in, in this case, they could just take these uh, services out of the process and then scale them as much as they needed uh, because they were very, very uh, CPU intensive. So part of the workflow is happening in memory 
and part of the workflow is happening uh, um, in a remote fashion or an outside memory fashion. And that's the flexibility that Gigaspaces and Mule can give you together. And all of that, of course, is transparent to your code. You don't need to change anything uh, in order to implement this type of, uh, of messaging scenario. The last bit here shows how we achieve high availability and fault tolerance for the application. So um, very similar to what I mentioned before, the, uh, each of the, uh, of the Mule application instances, we had two of these uh, to begin with. Each of them was, uh, um, was, was backed up by a backup copy, basically uh, running on, on another machine on the network. Um, and, and for example, we could use, uh, if we had two machines, for example, we could use um, both of them to run two primary instances, and then uh, part of the memory of those, of those machines would be used to host um, um, the backup instances uh, of the other of the other uh, of the other partition or of the other instance. And whenever a, a message gets sent through the system, it would transactionally and synchronously replicate uh, to the backup copy, which is out of another machine, thus achieving high availability. And during failover, basically all of the uh, clients were automatically routed to the uh, to the new to the backup copy, and the backup copy would become primary. And then the Gigaspaces um, environment would kick in and start the failed service on another known network. This is something that we're going to see uh, in the demo today. So to sum up this uh, this use case. Um, <coughs> Maybe, maybe uh, I'll start with the second bullet. Um, the, the Mule application was already in place, uh, mostly in place uh, when we got to the, uh, to the account. And the migration between uh, standard in-memory deployment uh, to a, a Gigaspace or space-based deployment uh, took less than a week and involved no code changes, only configuration changes. So that shows you how easy it is to take a real-life application and port it and make it highly available and, 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 and fault tolerant and scalable using uh, Gigaspaces. Um, <coughs> and that's basically uh, uh, what's, what's, what's there to say about uh, this uh, use case. OK. Uh, thanks, Yuri. This is a great, uh, a, very, a great example. So I think it's now time we can take a deeper dive. And why don't you give us a demonstration of Mule and Gigaspaces in action? Okay, certainly. Thanks, Ken. Yeah. Um, so the demo here is, is a very simple demo, uh, actually uh, a bit similar to, uh, to our use case. Um, the demo has uh, four main pieces. The first piece is obviously the, the Mule application. And, and basically, this, this entire application is, is a trader's desktop. And it enables you uh, uh, to see stock prices as they change, when they change. Uh, using a standard web browser. And the, the Mule application is used to, uh, uh, to receive data feed or receive stock ticks, basically, from a feeder application that simulates uh, real-life stock ticks. The Mule application receives each of these messages and, uh, and executes a workflow on these messages. The workflow includes two stages. The first one is just uh, uh, verifying that the message is valid, for example, uh, the price is not negative, or the symbol um, uh, is a symbol that exists in the symbol database. And then the, the, the second stage is uh, take this message and update the corresponding uh, stock element or the corresponding stock price so that it can be reflected uh, on the trader's desktop. The last bit of it is, is a standard JE UL application um, that uses, a, um, uses Spring MVC framework. And this, uh, this application connects um, to the uh, to the Gigaspaces data grid, to the Mule application, basically, and receives notifications using the Gigaspaces messaging capabilities. Receives notifications about changes made to uh, to the stock prices, and then it pumps those uh, those um, those uh, notification uh, all the way to the end customer using Ajax, Ajax uh, technology. Now the web application itself, just, uh, just in case you wondered, is also deployed within the Gigaspace environment. Uh, I mentioned before that uh, we, we already support the deployment of, of JE applications into the Gigaspace environment. Uh, so now let's see it in action. So the first thing uh, I'm going to show you guys, let me share the desktop with you. 
I'm going to share my uh, my desktop with you now. Um, you can you can click the uh, the maximize button at the top right of your screen and, and see my screen basically in in in, in the maximize mode. Um, this would help you maybe see the demo better. And I'll wait uh, a few seconds for that to come up on everyone's uh, screen. So what we see here is, is the end uh, is the front end of the application. I'm using a standard web browser, Firefox, and this is the uh, the application. I can see stock prices to which I subscribe, changing continuously, and I can look for more stock prices basically, and add them to one to my list of uh, of uh, watch stocks. Okay, and I can remove them of course, and that's a very simple application. Now. Um, let's have a look at how, these, uh, how this application looks uh, within the Gigaspace Management Console. So what we see here um, is the, the running machines uh, within, my, within my computer or within, within your network. And we can see that we have four containers, four Gigaspace containers. Each container um, basically contains a number of services. So the, the two, mo two leftmost containers Contain the, contain the new application and the data grid instance. You can see the data grid uh, instances um, in green and blue um, in, the t in, the left in the two leftmost containers. And green means that these are primary instances, and uh, blue means that these are backup instances. So you can see we have, that we have two primaries and two backups. So each of the primaries contains the new application instance and processes messages that end up within this uh, data grid partition. And each of the backups simply gets those messages replicated to it and stands by uh, in case something wrong happens. On the third uh, container to the left, we can see the, uh, this, the feeder application. Basically, this is a standard spring application deployed into the Gigaspace environment. And it's using a uh, new uh, client side API to pump messages into the system. And on the, right mo on the rightmost uh, container, we see the web application running. Uh, in this specific case, we use uh, uh, Jetty as the web container. Um, but Gigaspace also supports other web containers, uh, such as Glassfish, for example. Now, to kind of um, make it a bit more interesting, I'm going to go into the cluster runtime view. And here I can see the running containers. On this screen you see now GSC actually stands for Gigaspace Container. So I can pick any one of them at random, and I can just kill it. And what happens is that immediately the process is killed. And we can see back in the monitoring screen that we only have three containers now. But the Gigaspace environment actually senses that. And what will happen now is that the failed services, in this case uh, the stock feeder, for example, that resided on the failed container is now redeployed and restarted on, the, uh, on one of the existing containers and keeps pumping messages into the system. Um, now if we go back to the space browser view, this is, this is a, a view that shows actually the data grid itself. We can see that everything is still running. We can see the statistics of the operations and messages are, are, uh, keep getting pumped into the system continuously because services uh, kind of recovered and are now working as usual. Getting back to the uh, uh, client side of things, we can see that messages are still pumped, stock prices are still changing, and everything works as before without any problem. So with that, I'll end my demo. And let's bring those slides back up. Yuri, that's great. Uh, so we, we hope to share some more, more successful customer stories like this soon. And if anyone on the call is already using Mule and Gigaspaces together, please let us know. We'd love to highlight uh, your use case. So uh, I'd like to, to recap. 
uh, some of the things we learned about the Mule and Gigaspaces solution and how it can really help uh, complement each other to, uh, solve, uh, to solve problems. First, if you're an existing Mule user, this can boost your Mule application with, by providing enterprise-grade capa capabilities with very little or no code or configuration changes. Also, if you're an existing Gigaspaces user, you can utilize Mule to develop and deploy modular and reusable services uh, on the, across the uh, Gigaspa Gigaspaces uh, grid. Also, for new customers that are looking to apply SOA paradigms to high-performance transactional applications on a scalable and flexible platform without having vendor lock-in, then this solution will also meet your requirements. So, with that, we'd like to move on and address some of the questions that uh, have been raised, and we've got a, a couple here that uh, people have asked, and if you have a question, just feel free to, to type it in, and we'll, we'll try to get to it. So, let's see, you want to go back, there's a, a few questions, uh, there's one question about uh, is the platform flexible enough to add things like SIP adapters, SS7 adapters, and so with, uh, with Mule we have, a, um, we have something called the Mule Forge, and if you go to uh, uh, www.muleforge.org you can see a number of projects that exist. Uh, and the Mule platform is extremely flexible to add uh, all sorts of new, new transports. And there actually, I believe, is a, a, a SIP transport uh, available on there um, that uh, has been, uh, there's been some development on. Uh, and so it's uh, very easy for people to uh, add and contribute uh, new and additional transports or other modules to Mule. Okay. Uh, I've also put up some links for some other information where you can find uh, information on Mule, Mule Source and Gigaspaces and some of the documentation on the uh, particular integration. Um, yeah, by the way, Ken, uh, we'll, we'll also have the, the code of the, uh, of the demo available for, uh, for the participants so they can okay. kind of get a first-hand first impression how this was implemented. Okay, great. And actually, there's a... Um, uh, one uh, somewhat related question is about what the level of effort was to integrate Mule and make it run on, on Gigaspace. Gary, you, you want to address that? Yeah, uh, sure. So, um, uh, like I said, uh, when we first, when Gigaspaces first got to the customer, the Mule application was practically implemented, and it took us less than a week to, uh, to deploy it on Gigaspace and, and reconfigure the application to use uh, uh, the Gigaspace's uh, SATA queues instead of in-memory SATA queues. Great. A uh, couple other questions for you, Yuri. Uh, how, how does the data grid work in multiple data center scenarios? Does it replicate across the WAN environment? Uh, first of all, it can. Basically, it's up to you, and it's uh, it's up to the uh, to the speed uh, of your interconnect between the data centers. Uh, we usually do with customers uh, as we have what we call a gateway service, and this gateway service basically stands on both ends of each data center, and basically is the focal point for pumping messages outside one data center and inside another data center. And on the other end, we have uh, another gateway service, kind of an inbound get, uh, gateway service that receives the messages from the other data center and redistributes them across the, the local data grid. This is kind of the most recommended topology that we use on what we call WAN-based environments or multiple data centers. Okay. All right, uh, another question. How, how is the request load balanced between two active Mule servers? Okay, so the, the requests basically use what we call a content-based routing. So um, you can take a message or an object for that matter. It can be any object. And you can designate one of the fields in that object to determine what we call the routing or the, or the partitioning key. So, for example, if you have two, three, or four application instances, you can designate the message ID or uh, in this case, for example, in the demo, we use the stock symbol um, to as, as, as the routing field. And what this means is that uh, two messages that are going to have the same value for this, uh, for this field are going to end up in the same partition or in the same application instance. Okay. 
Um, does the does Mule have to be installed on the Gigaspaces web container to leverage the in memory queuing? Well, um, what you have to do basically is uh, is, is use uh, a Gigaspace installation and a Mule installation. But when I say installation, this is not a heavyweight uh, type of installation. Uh, you just need to take the Gigaspace and Mule jars and put them in some common place, uh, so both platforms can use them. Yeah, exactly. And actually, uh, related, there's a question I think I'd answer about the is there a bundled copy available for download with the demos? So. There's, there's not a bundle copy, but uh, we'll provide instructions basically of, of where you can get the necessary pieces to, uh, to, to run the dem demonstration. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, there's a question about, uh, another question about reliability. Can the grid persist to disk when reliability is critical? Yes, certainly. So we have uh, two persistency modes. One is, is what we call synchronous persistency. Um, this is obviously gives you the highest level of reliability, but then again, it's the slowest, um, it's the slowest way to do that because your performance is, going to, is only going to be as fast as you can persist to a disk, which basically uh, is much much slower than persistent than writing stuff to memory. Um, the other mode is called asynchronous persistency, and what you can do is you can have um, the data grid instances. Uh, replicate to what we call uh, a mirror service or an asynchronous persistency service. And this service, in turn, puts things in the database. And the nice thing about it is that this, uh, this service is 100% uh, uh, foolproof. So if one node fails in the data grid, you don't lose data. Everything uh, is continued from the same place by the backup copies of the data grid. So you get kind of the good out of both worlds. You have in-memory performance, or data grid performance, and you get persistency to this case synchronously. So it's not affecting the runtime performance of your transactions. Okay. And um, I think maybe the same answer might apply, uh, but uh, there's a question about whether gigaspaces can help with synchronous messaging as well as asynchronous. Um, definitely, definitely. So with gigaspaces, uh, um, you can use... Um, we have Actually, we have our own... Um, remoting framework, for example, uh, which you can actually call methods and have the, the, the space or the data grid be used as a backbone uh, for transporting those calls, and, and you can use them in a synchronous or asynchronous mode. So it's very easy to implement uh, uh, both. Okay. All right. Uh, how would how would you address a scenario where a workflow consists of a sequence of transactions with an existing legacy system? I think I can. And so in relation to Mule, it, Mule would behave as normal and could manage those transactions for you, and you can possibly scale out at any discrete stage in the transaction sequence uh, using the, um, the Gigaspaces capabilities. Um, we're getting a lot of uh, great questions here, so I appreciate that. Uh, Yuri, is there anything that you'd uh, in particular like to uh, respond to? Uh, let me just browse through the yeah. questions. Um. Okay, so there's one question uh, about uh, how failures are discovered and what happens uh, um, to recover them automatically. So the way this works is that uh, <coughs> The, the, from the client side, basically the one that's sending messages, um, the Gigaspace has, Gigaspace has a smart proxy which constantly monitors um, the running components in the data grid. And when something bad happens, basically it senses that one of the, uh, one of the uh, data grid nodes has failed, um, it basically holds the, the, the information about all the topology um, on the client side and we can then automatically uh, reroute all the messages um, to the uh, to another data grid instance, basically the backup instance for that uh, um, for that uh, partition. Uh, the other bit of it is that uh, Gigaspace's management uh, uh, services, when they sense that something fails, they can actually take, like we saw in the demo, they can uh, um, they can take the services that was that were running on that failed instance and then redeploy them on another available instance in the data grid.
All right. Uh, we've had a few questions about transactions and the uh, and the data grid and across the space. Is there anything that uh, you could say about transaction support? Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, so, first of all, programmatically speaking, uh, we support um, either uh, explicit transaction management via code or implicit transaction management uh, via the Spring Framework transaction abstractions. So if you are used to that, uh, it, would be, it would be very easy for you to uh, use Gigaspace transactions. Now, Gigaspace has uh, three types of support, three, three types of transactions. The first one is what we call local transaction, uh, when you work with a single instance of the data grid, sending messages to a single data grid instance. Um, then you use local transactions, which are obviously the fastest. If you're sending messages to multiple data grid nodes under the same transaction, you can use Gigaspace distributed transaction uh, to coordinate between all those uh, nodes. And of course, if you're using an external system, such as an application server or, uh, or an external transaction uh, coordinator, Gigaspace supports XA transactions and can enlist to XA transactions as an XA resource and be part of them as well. So there's also a question about uh, what happens when a message is received in the Mule instance that receives it fails. And I would just expand on that if you're using tr Mule supports similar transaction capabilities as Gigaspaces. So if you're using transactions um, with Mule, then the transaction should be successfully rolled back. Um, okay. Lots of questions. Um, So there's maybe Yuri. If there's a, you can maybe look to see if there's another question that um, you'd like to answer. Um, there's a couple questions right. about why um, why Gigaspace as opposed to some other opposed to an application server or other solutions. Um, and okay, so yeah, yeah. Um, so Gigaspace is much more than just a plain application server. Um, it gives you, uh, it's kind of a, um, a complete package. So instead of using a, a separate application server and a separate messaging server and a separate uh, even database and have to coordinate transactions between those, uh, those components and have to use separate clustering strategies for those components and have to basically manage them um, um, separately and have experts that know how to deal with each of, each of these components. Gigaspace is, is a single product that gives you all of those capabilities. And it has a unified clustering model, so um, you don't have to take care of all of the pieces, and, and it's much simpler to route a transaction uh, flowing through the system because it's only, only going through uh, uh, one, uh, one product. Um, in addition to that, if you're talking about for example, plain uh, JE application, uh, the added value that Gigaspace brings to the table is, is the ability to assign uh, SLA to those uh, applications or to manage the deployment in a smarter way than you would, than you would with a traditional uh, JE application server. Um, so for example, uh, determining uh, the number, assigning the number of instances to this application, um, being able uh, to uh, uh, recover automatically or reheal the application in case uh, something goes wrong. The Gigaspace management software will uh, um, will take care of redeploying cell instances, uh, and, and maybe most importantly, is the ability to dynamically scale the application. So, for example, in one of our other demos, what we do is we monitor the number of requests flowing into the system, web requests, simply uh, a simple web application. And what Gigaspace platform can give you is the ability to say, okay, when the number of requests per container exceeds a certain value, just start more containers and evenly load the, uh, the balance across those containers. And we even support the dynamic configuration of the load balancer that fronts the web application. Okay, so um, besides the functional level of the application, um, you also uh, have a much more flexible and robust uh, deployment environment. Okay. Um, 
What does the integration look like from a technical point of view? So if you go to the integration docs that are listed on the detailed slide that you're seeing now, you can get a fair amount of detail of, of the technical integration, but it's based upon the standard abstraction layers within Mule, and so in terms of providing uh, a, a, a gigaspace-based uh, space-based transport, as well as the uh, the the um, uh, SATA queues uh, uses you know the existing APIs and abstraction layer that are available for for anyone doing any sort of integration uh, with the Mule platform. Okay. So uh, some of the questions uh, we can probably also answer uh, when we put together and send out the archive, and so we'll include the, uh, the questions in that as well if we did not get to your question here today. Um, we have a couple more minutes. If, uh, Yuri, if there's anything else you want to address. Well, let me just browse through the questions. If Um, maybe touch a little bit about more, a little bit more about uh, the way transactions are made. Um, so I said before that uh, when the uh, when the workflow is is uh, the new workflow basically is implemented on top of the, of the Gigaspaces SATA queues. Um, basically, you can choose uh, in the configuration whether you want this work workflow to be transaction or not. Um, and that means that when something bad happens. Uh, to which point you're rolling back. Right? So if the, if, if the message flow obviously is not transactional, it's a bit faster, but then on the other end, if the workflow is very long and something bad happens uh, and during that workflow, basically you get back to the starting point. Um, then if you're using transactional uh, uh, queues, then every point of that workflow, once it's done, it's transactionally committed to the data grid. So when you fail, you only lose the last step, or you only lose the, the step that was happening uh, during the, fa the failure time. Um, now, just one more point about uh, uh, the installation. Um, basically, what we'll do is, is uh, we'll have we'll have uh, um, right uh, we'll have we'll have a, a ready ready installation package that basically uh, bundles uh, um, the two the two products um, and. Um, you'll have everything ready, uh, ready in that package, and you won't have to kind of gather all the installations from uh, uh, from all the from, from from the web. That's that's great news. Um, all right, uh, maybe one one more question, one or two more questions. Is can spaces be heterogeneous, or are they all mirror images? So I believe. Um, uh, Gigaspaces does support different partitioning schemes, correct? Yes. So spaces okay. can be uh, replicated, which means they all share the same information, and they can be partitioned, um, which means they 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 have uh, different data sets on each part uh, different data sets on each partition, and each partition can be backed up with uh, multiple backup copies. So you can kind of mix and match both. Okay. All right, I think with that, we'll wrap up the uh, Q&A portion of this. Again, there are more details. Uh, you can follow the links on this slide, and we'll be providing uh, an archive of the Q&A um, along with the webinar archive. Great. Ladies and gentlemen, please take two minutes to fill out the polls on your screen. Okay. Uh, I want to thank Yuri very much for, uh, for joining and, and presenting the uh, demonstration to us. Thank you, uh, Yuri. It's my pleasure, Tom. Okay. And uh, again, we'll be sending out the, um, the archive of the uh, webinar, and thank you, everyone, for joining. Goodbye. This concludes today's conference. Thank you for attending.